Welcome to iLecture Online. In this series of videos, we're going to talk about the Milky Way galaxy, our home. At one point in time, there were some big debates and discussions whether or not that was the entire universe or was there anything beyond our own galaxy. Of course, going way back, we thought that the whole universe was basically the Earth, the Sun, the planets, some of the moons, and of course, well, in that case, there would only be one moon at that point that they knew of. And, of course, we saw the little pinpoints of light in the heavens, and we figured that was the entire universe. But we've come way beyond that, and, of course, now we realize there's hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe. But here's the one that we can call our home, the Milky Way galaxy, and we're going to use that as a study to get a feel of what galaxies are truly like. Of course, there's a lot of different types of galaxies, but our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy, is what we call a spiral galaxy. It's one of the most beautiful types of galaxies that we can imagine. And here's a beautiful picture of a galaxy that probably looks a lot like the Milky Way galaxy. This is called the Pinwheel Galaxy, M101. It's one of the Messier objects. And you can see the beautiful uh, spiral arms that emanate away from the center, from the bulge, as we call it, of the galaxy. And we feel that our galaxy probably looks a lot like it. Of course, there's no pictures of our own galaxy like that because we live inside the galaxy and there's no way that we could ever jump into a spaceship, travel to the outside, take a picture, go back home. The galaxy is just absolutely enormous in size and that will probably never happen. So we just have to go by what we think it looks like based upon our old calculations and observations and presumably it looks a lot like the pinwheel galaxy. But let's take a look at the overall structure. So there's two ways of looking at a galaxy. We can look at it head on like this one. So this is again the reason why it's such a beautiful picture is because we have a top-down look at the galaxy. We can clearly see the central part of the galaxy and then the emanating spiral arms away from the center. So this is what we call the top-down look. Now what we do believe may be different from the uh, pinwheel galaxy is that we think that our galaxy has a bar-shaped center. In other words, instead of having a spherical shaped center, we have more of a rectangular shaped center at the center. That's what we do believe. And then we have the emanating spiral arms that come off the, the bar, typically mostly from the opposite ends of the bar, not from the sides per se, but from the ends of the bar. And so we have these spiral arms and our sun is located in between two of the major spiral arms that come off the galaxy. Our sun is about 28,000 light years from the center, and believe me, that's an enormous distance. So we can also look at the cut through. For example, if we're able to zoom down and look at it from this direction, then we see something that looks like this, where we have the central balls that's clearly visible as being much thicker than the, what we call the galactic plane. So here we have the galactic plane that goes around the galaxy like that. The distance from one end to the other end is about 100,000 light years right here. So that's about the size of the galaxy. When we look at the diameter of the galaxy, that's basically looking from here to here. It's about 100,000 light years for our galaxy. Then the central bulge tends to be a little bit different in color. You can see the reddish color of the center. That's because that's where we find the older stars. Older stars tend to be more of the orange and red type of star on the main sequence. And so therefore the central bulge tends to be that color. And then the spiral arms is where we see a lot more of the newer stars, especially the very bright blue giants. And they give the spiral arms typically a bluish color. Even though there aren't that many of them, each one can outshine hundreds of thousands of regular types of stars, this, so they kind of dominate the color of the spiral arms. Now, about some of the other structures, so I have the central bulge, which is about 20 to 30,000 light years across. It's about 10,000 light years thick, which is much thicker than the galactic plane itself. Notice that that's only about two to 3,000 light years, but it doesn't mean that nothing goes beyond that. You'll still find stars and global clusters well beyond, and even some of the nebulas, well beyond that confinement of the galactic disk, about the two to 3,000 light year thickness of the disk. But the main portion of the matter that we can see is indeed within about that range. Now notice our sun right here is about 28,000 light years away from the center. Another part of the general structure of the galaxy is that our galaxy at the very center, we happen to have what we call an SMBH, a supermassive black hole, roughly about four or five 
million times the mass of the Sun and around it we have some uh, potentially an accretion disk and some radio emissions. The radio source from the center galaxy is known as Sagittarius A and that is presumably the, because the central uh, black hole at the very center is not a complete dormant black hole. There's some activity, some material potentially falling in and so we see some radio emissions and some X-ray emissions at the very center of our galaxy presumably coming from that region. Also notice you see a lot of dots right here. Now each of these dots that you see that goes well beyond the confinement of the central bulge and the galactic disk, all those dots represent globular clusters. Our galaxy has about 150 of these globular clusters that contain anywhere from tens of thousands to well over a million stars each. The biggest one contains about 10 million stars and so therefore those are huge conglomerates or congregations of very dense regions of stars and you can see that those goes well beyond the bulge and the galactic disk. Notice that this gives you kind of, it's kind of like a swarm of bees around the galaxy throughout the galactic disk, throughout the central bolts and around it like this and so this gives us what we call the spherical region. Presumably at the early stages of the formation of the galaxy, our galaxy tended to be more of a spherical shape and then throughout the Billions and billions of years, the galaxy is slow, slow, slowly rotating around. The centripetal forces probably collapsed it in this direction and kept it in a kind of a disc-like shape into this direction. Then, what we can also presume is that there's like a halo structure to it that encapsulates everything that's visible and potentially more, in, more material, more mass that is not visible, the dark matter that we, we presume is, is there because of the gravitational influences of the mass that's there on the stars that's within the visible, visible part of the galaxy, we have to presume that there must be additional mass that may be many times the total mass of the visible galaxy itself which enclose or encapsulates the entire galaxy and goes well beyond the confines of the visible part of the, of the galaxy and so we call that the halo of the galaxy presumably necessary to contain the galaxy in a gravitational lock and presumably at the very early stages of the development of the universe was necessary to start the gravitational collapse of matter into galaxy formations. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about that some more. So again, the general structure of a galaxy. Oh, and one more thing I forgot to mention, all those little funny little circles or kind of collapse circles, those are supposed to be nebulas and dust lanes and dust structures within the galaxy that is completely uh, within the galactic disk and within the bulge and some of them will actually go somewhat beyond what we can tell as being the galactic disk and the bulge. But we still have a, quite a bit of material that can be used to make new stars and so those are the nebulas and dust lanes which in a way is kind of a pain because we can't really see in visible light the center of our galaxy because there's too much of this stuff in, in between that blocks the light coming from that direction. And so our only ability to see, basically see what's at the center, is through mostly radio telescopes and some infrared radiation. So the basic structure again, we have the central bulge, we have the galactic disk, we have the globular clusters, we have the dust lanes and nebulas, we have the what we would call the spherical region containing all the visible matter and then we have the halo structure that completely encapsulates and goes well beyond the visible confines of the galaxy. At the very center our galaxy has a supermassive black hole and some radio radiation that's indicative of some material falling into that black hole. That is what we call our home or our Milky Way galaxy. You mean this one right here? Mm -hmm. is, is this in the bottom view? Is that how thick is the bar now? Is it a thin little thing or? No, it's, it's the bar would be about this size. So we always presume that the galactic bulge is kind of spherical in shape so that we see in the, in the uh, pinwheel galaxy, we see kind of a spherical shape. But now we believe with additional observations that we've done in the last few years, we begin to see that the structure is more like a rectangle, like a, uh, not just a flat rectangle, but like a box shaped region in here that has a thickness of about 10,000 light years and a length of about 20 to 30,000 light years. And you mentioned earlier in another chapter that in the middle is a black hole. Mm -hmm. And the black hole gives off a lot of light or is that only a, a active black hole? 
so it's not the intensity of what we would call a quasar. It's not nearly that intensive. It's far, far less than that. We do get the radio signals that would indicate that there's some material that's circulating the black hole like an accretion disk, and there's some X-ray radiation coming from that. So we do believe there's an accretion disk around the black hole, and so there's probably some material falling in, but not anything like we would see in a quasar. So the light in the middle mostly is not from the accretion disk? So the light, we can't really, we don't see any of the light from the center. We're completely yeah. blocked from the yeah, center. Accretion. So we can't see the accretion disk, we can't see any of the stars in here. We just get some infrared radiation and some uh, radio radiation coming from the center and then also the 21 centimeter spin flip of the electrons, <coughs> excuse me, from the hydrogen. So we kind of piece all that vague information together to kind of get a feel of what's happening at the center because we really can't see it. So the brightness in the center is not from the the brightness of the center is not from visible light. We only see the brightness of the center. Oh, I, I think I know what you're saying. So you're talking about the brightness. Why does it look so bright? Because this region right here is this entire region. We're talking about the tiny little pinprick of a black hole relative to that central bulge. The central bulge is huge compared to the region that contains yeah, the black hole. earlier in the chapter that the black hole or the, um, the um, neutrons, whatever it is, neutron star, it's so bright that you could barely see the... Ah, yes. So in the case of a quasar, the enormous radiation we get from a very active black hole that's swallowing up all kinds of material, yeah, the radiation coming from that is so intensive, so bright, that we can't see the rest of the galaxy. We can it's barely not, see it. It's not the case in the nuclei. Not at all the case, no. We don't live in a galaxy like that. Yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, if back in the days when this black hole was growing in size and lots of material was falling in. Presumably, it kind of acted like a quasar. We can think that in the past it probably did. Now it's just a very meek little, little black hole. <laughs> Not doing much of anything.